Hi, my name is Bennett Goldberg. I'm director of the Sorrell Center for Advancing Learning and Teaching at Northwestern University. When we're interacting with each other in a personal, social, or work setting, most of how we operate tends to be focused on the tasks at hand. We don't typically walk around thinking about who we are or why we act the way we do. We don't generally analyze who we work with and how our identities and backgrounds influence the types of interactions that we have with each other. But if we did, we'd have a better understanding of ourselves and the people around us, particularly those who may be different. You've gathered by now that self-reflection, whether on self or on interactions with others, is a core part of the learning and behaviors we are seeking to generate. The process of reflection involves the conscious consideration and analysis of beliefs and actions for the purpose of learning. It's a proven technique. Research has demonstrated that workers who spent 15 minutes at the end of the day self-reflecting about lessons learned perform more than 20% better than a control group after just 10 days. A study that prompted commuters to use their commute time to reflect on their coming workday were happier, more productive, and less burned out. An effective evidence-based approach for student learning is around metacognition, having students reflect on how they are learning. This all makes sense. The more intentional we are in how we do our work, the more we set ourselves up for success. We bring ourselves into all of our interactions, and we make meaning of how we see ourselves and others in the context of our own experiences. Reflection can help you sort through and categorize those experiences more effectively and improve them over time. My colleague Sarah has a particular way of thinking about reflection, and here she is describing it. So this is a weird analogy, but my family has a junk drawer in the kitchen, and they throw all kinds of weird stuff in it, you know, the scotch tape, the scissors, and we're the only ones that know where to find the things in the junk drawer. So if someone else came into our house, they'd have no idea if we said just go find it in the junk drawer what that meant or what would be in there and i think the brain works a lot like that you know we have these random thoughts that go by day after day and we don't catalog them in any way and so there's just chaos in the junk drawer and to me reflection is the process of organizing the drawer and that can feel good for two reasons one it declutters everything you're less stressed um, you have an organization for what it is that you're going to do but it also brings in that space for other people to give feedback because it's not a mess. They can see what your plan is and where it's going and they know how to help you. And so for me, that's the power of reflection. It's that piece that brings it all together and organizes the massive thoughts that are going through your head. And so in order to be able to process and make productive all of the different cultures and perspectives that exist in our lives, it's important to unpack and understand our own identities first. Kumugai and Lipson argue that intercultural fluency, not just competency, requires time spent in self-reflection of one's assumptions, biases, and values. Though there are a number of tools that you can explore in our resources section, we have chosen an identity grid activity to get your self-reflection started. How do you see yourself? What is important to you? What do you value? What assumptions do you make about situations you are in or about others based on that sense of self? How do you think others see you? What assumptions do you think others make when they'd see you? We will dive deeper into these questions and this activity in the next video.